Oh, there we go. Okay. And uh, nothing, um, nothing to disclose. Um, looks like I'm uh, having my, my time reset. Um, so why are we here? Uh, this is the great existential question. Uh, what am I going to talk to you about? Uh, and it's not my disclosure slide. Um, it is uh, uh, just to do a bit of reality check. Uh, how to write a manuscript. I'm not going to um, uh, teach you here how to target uh, top journals. Um, so if you're doing research and you're working on doing uh, writing articles for, uh, for the Lancet and the New England Journal of Medicine, um, th this isn't the type of advice that's gonna get you there. I I'm talking mostly about this category of journals, which is the bread and butter of our work. Um, so I've listed here uh, journal impact factors, and it's important to keep in mind um, journal impact factors because this does have implications about where your work is cited and, and the value on your CV. Um, but I'm talking about how to write uh, articles for our specialty journals. So um, this is a uh, picture of Anna Karenina, uh, Leo Tolstoy, and uh, why, why do I have this picture? Um, there's a great quote um, from the book that happy families are all alike, but every unhappy family is unhappy in its own particular way. And uh, scientific papers are exactly the same. Every good paper is identical. It's the same paper. There's a formula. I will give you the formula. I'll give you a template to download it. And if you follow that formula, you'll be fine. It's not an exercise in creative writing. Uh, a good paper is the same. There's lots of variation about bad papers. They all look, uh, they all look different. So how to write a paper. The one thing you should get from my talk is the thing on the bottom, and I'll leave it on for the next few slides so you don't have to frantically scroll it. It's a uh, Google site. And if you go, even if you just Google, well, Google sites and then surgical research resources, one word, there's really only one document. I, I, I just made the site to post this document, and you can download it, and it's, it's basically your paper, and you cut and paste and put, put your own bits of where, um, where my headings are, and your paper will write itself. So how do you write a paper? The first thing to remember about writing a paper is don't write a paper. Uh, because if you set out and start at the beginning and try and write a paper, it's not gonna work. Um, your supervisor isn't going to be able to work with you because you're gonna spend all this time, put something together that your supervisor won't be able to work with. Um, uh, what you'll end up is not a great paper and then it's a huge copy editing job. So what you wanna do is just do the bare minimum to get started do the outline structure, and I'll show you what an outline is going to look like. But more importantly, um, you know, do the analyses, get some tables, get some figures, um, get the key scientific exhibits of the paper, and then the, the rest of the paper is formed around those things. So really you want to get the key highlights. It's almost like doing a poster. What are your results? Put them in tables. I'll show you how to do tables. And then create an outline around the tables. When you write, you're only writing little bits at a time, and I'll show you as you expand your outline into a paper, you're not writing a whole paper, you're just writing paragraph two of the introduction, or you're writing you know, the statistical analysis of your methods. You can set aside 30 minutes, and you can extend your, your uh, outline uh, into your paper. And don't make a good first draft. If you make a good first draft, you're gonna waste everybody's time. You wanna just get it down on paper, um, if the writing is bad, that's fantastic. That's what I tell my students. I don't want something good because if it's good, you've wasted too much time and, and I won't be able to work with it. I just want an outline and I want to work with your ideas. We'll get it straight, get it all down, and then we can make it great. Um, so the quick short paper is that document uh, and that's the website. So you can all uh, download it and, um, and use it for yourself. All this information is contained over there as well. So you don't have to write anything down. So one paper is one message. Uh, and as you're writing, this is general writing advice, you're not writing to impress. The best papers are very simple, using as simple language as possible. Um, don't use long sentences. Use the active voice. So the example here, um, there's a tendency when we think of scientific writing to use the passive voice, like logistic regression was used to do this, uh, whereas the active voice is much more interesting to read. Um, a paragraph is a thought, and you can uh, in your outline, you have two or three words to kind of put a thought there. That will develop into a paragraph. So uh, your outline has placeholders for these concepts. Um, short sentences and avoid abbreviations. When you do your first draft of the paper, just, just write everything out. Um, uh, abbreviations really make it difficult uh, for other people to uh, read your paper and they don't, they don't make you look more impressive. Um, so this is kind of what your outline is gonna look like. Uh, you really want a bare bones structure. It's got all the subheadings um, for your paper and if you download the template, the outline is all there. Um, you also need the figures and tables. You can't 
do those afterwards. The pa that your paper is about your figures and your tables, mostly tables, maybe a figure. So those have to be nailed down and perfect. So you and your supervisor will get that right, get the, get the outline, and then work that into a paper. The outline is important. It gives you a structure for the paper. It focuses you on what's important. So you're working on concepts. You're not copy editing. You're not trying to get language perfect, which is totally unimportant. Um, you'll get feedback that's meaningful because the, um, your supervisor will actually give you feedback on what's important, on the, on the concept. I, I, is, did you, um, you know, describe the population right? Is the, um, I, you know, is the research even correct? You want high level information. You don't want someone tinkering with your grammar and your style. And it's very easy to turn an outline into a paper. Uh, it can be done in about an hour. Um, when you do write, you don't write the paper in the order that you would read it. So papers are follow what's called the IMRAD order, so uh, introduction, methods, results, uh, and discussion. Um, that's on the left side. The first thing you write is the methods, and I'll show you, because the methods are basically already done. You've done the study, you've done your tables, so uh, it's very easy to translate that into words. Next section is results, um, then discussion, uh, introduction, and finally, when everything is done, you'll do the abstract. And uh, I'll go through those sections now one slide uh, at a time. Uh, but again, you start with the methods. It's the easiest. It basically already exists. Use lots of subheadings. So for example, study subjects is a subheading, and then you'll have a little paragraph about how you selected your study subjects. Um, any result in your paper needs a method. So if there's a p-value for something, or if there's a percentage, or if there's, you have to describe somewhere in your methods how that result could have been achieved. And then this point over here, uh, justify your sample size based on detecting a specified treatment effect. So raise your hand if you know what that means. Okay, so you people are great, go ahead. If you, if you didn't raise your hand, you're going to need some help designing a study. Because every, st uh, for, uh, for a study to actually be meaningful and to be able to say yes, it showed something or no, it didn't show something, um, you have to work with someone who's got quantitative knowledge, a statistician or someone with some statistics knowledge who can explain to you why that's important. So if you don't know what that meant, you definitely need to work with someone who can help you from the quantitative point of view. And then there's the no results uh, symbol there, which means there are no results to be presented in the method section. Anything that presents new observation, the result of uh, any, any observation at all, goes in the, uh, in, the, in the results, not in the methods. So the results section is, is basically telling a story, and you have to think of the results as telling the story of your tables and figures. Um, and the easiest way to do that is just have one paragraph per exhibit. So one table is an exhibit, one figure is an exhibit. And the paragraph just tells the story and you synthesize the main message. You don't repeat all the numbers that are in the table. Uh, so you can say something like, you know, table one presents the characteristics of the study subjects. Overall, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, as I said before in the methods, each result is matched to each method. So uh, if you use subheadings, you can sort of match the subheadings, um, and, uh, and that's a very nice way to do that. Um, there's no interpretation or discussion at all in the methods. So you can't make any value statements, nothing like, wow, this, is, this was high, this was surprising, anything. It's just the facts, just the numbers. Present them as clearly as you can, and you'll discuss them as you'll see in the next, se next um, uh, section. Um, tables should be very informative. Uh, if you look at journals, and you look at really good journals, and then you look at our average specialty journals, uh, there's a big difference in how the tables look. So in great journals, so if you look at uh, JAMA, New England Journal, Lancet, they're very informative, they're dense, they've got lots of footnotes. Um, the titles are long and, and explanatory, and the footnotes often contain information about some of the methods. How did you get the study subjects? How was the analysis done? So just I, um, the, the way to make a table really good is to say, well, if I just took that table, as, as Ray just showed you his talk on how to do a talk, and I put that in a talk, would that basically tell the whole story? Could someone just look at that table and figure out exactly what was done? And if they can do that, then it's a good table. Um, and the way they can do that is by having a very informative uh, title and by having a lot of detail in the footnotes. Um, and uh, again, all this information is uh, in that downloaded template. Um, so. Our, our papers tend to be very big on uh, tables and not so big on figures. Um, figures are useful though, and you should consider using one or two. And they're particularly useful to synthesize lots, uh, lots of information uh, to avoid tables that are too data dense and too cluttered. Um, uh, 
remember, you, do, you don't want to present actual data. You want to present like individual uh, data points. You want, you want to synthesize as much information as possible. And if you look on the left-hand side, um, things like uh, simple histograms and pie charts really don't fit very well in scientific papers. They don't communicate a lot of information. Um, a pie chart really just gives you a proportion, a percentage. You can put that in a table. So what you want to make is your, um, uh, your figures information rich, like uh, you know, these types of forest plots where you can provide a lot of estimates and confidence intervals and p-values or something. That, that's a very useful role for figures. Uh, survival curves, things like that are also uh, times that you might want to use figures. Paragraphs are always, uh, paragraph introductions are always three paragraphs. Uh, there, there's a first paragraph, a second paragraph, and a third paragraph. The first one is very easy. Uh, it's just what's the underlying problem? Uh, and this is your general statements about, uh, you know, colorectal cancer is common, serious, and a big cause of death, for example. Just set the stage. The third paragraph is very easy, too, because it always starts, the objective of this study was to, ellipsis, and then you just fill in the objective. And the second paragraph just connects your first paragraph to your final paragraph. So it takes a background, and then it sort of identifies what's the, what's the knowledge gap. Uh, you know, we found there wasn't a lot of information on, uh, you know, this particular problem in this population. So um, that sort of leads you into your segue, uh, the objective of this particular study. There's not a lot of citations in the introduction. You know, you might cite maybe one to five papers, but the literature review, as you'll see, goes in the discussion. Discussion. So the introduction is three paragraphs. The discussion is five parts. And these are the five parts, and it's in that uh, template. Um, the first paragraph is very easy. It summarizes the main results of your study. Uh, your next paragraph, or two, uh, interprets what your study found in light of the existing literature. Uh, you always have a limitations section. And in your limitations, you mitigate the limitations. Like, you might think this would be a limitation, but you know, in fact, it's not. And you'll explain why it's not such a limitation. Uh, the fourth is more interpretive, what, all, what it all means, what's next. And the fifth paragraph, uh, or the fifth section, is a paragraph that always starts, in conclusion, comma, we found that, blah, blah, and you repeat, once again, your main findings. And this is where you do your extensive review of the literature. Don't use too many references. A paper shouldn't really have more than 40 references, a scientific manuscript. 20 to 30 is a reasonable number. And then front matter, uh, as far as title, uh, use something that's neutral and informative. Um, and the last thing you write is your abstract, because the abstract can only be written once everything else is complete. So um, this is the overview, and the most important thing is the website on the bottom. But remember, every single paper is identical. Work from an outline. Don't write you know, from the abstract onto the end. Keep it short. Write in the order that I showed you, and um, download the template that has all this information. Thanks very much.